Hey everyone, I'm going to be doing a quick video on how Bitbucket Cloud has been using JPD to manage our uh, product engineering workflows. Um, we've been adopting JPD quite heavily over the last few months. Um, I've been helping the team to implement these processes and I wanted to share how we've been doing it because um, I think it's something that other teams might benefit from. So this is going to be the first of a few different videos touching on how we use JPD for different things. Uh, the first one is going to be looking at our, what we call our ideas inbox process, and that's kind of how ideas get into our planning process as PMs, how we decide what we're going to look at, how we decide what we're not going to look at, and how we manage those things when we go down one path or another. So to give you a high level idea of what this process looks like, I've sort of drawn it out here very rough. So we have this idea of someone creating an idea. We want anyone in the team to be able to create an idea to get worked on. And that way, it's not just PMs deciding what does and doesn't get worked on. There's ways for designers to propose things. There's ways for engineers to propose things. There's ways for people outside the teams to propose things. All these ideas land in what we call an ideas inbox. Uh, and that inbox is triaged every fortnight by the product management team. There's the opportunity to escalate ideas in that inbox. So if something is particularly important and you need to make sure it's going to be reviewed at the next available meeting, you can escalate them. And those items will always get looked at first. Once an idea is being reviewed, there's a few steps we go through. The first step is we want to make sure there's enough information on the idea to actually make a good decision about it. And if there's not, we have a process which allows people to uh, request more information. And then once the information has been provided, it goes back into the queue. Assuming there is enough information on the uh, idea or the ticket, we need to decide whether or not it's a priority, whether it's something we're going to look at straight away. If it's not, we have two options. We can say we want to review it in a certain number of months and it will come back. Or we can just say it's not something we're going to look at right now and, and that kind of stops the process. And finally, once we've decided that something is a priority that we want to look at, it's assigned to a PM and then it's accepted to the backlog. So this process here is pretty much all managed through JPD uh, in combination with a few um, automations. So I'm going to run everyone through kind of how we do this at the moment. So over in JPD, this is the Bitbucket Cloud uh, backlog JPD. It's a bit more than a backlog. There's a lot in here. But I'm going to quickly take you through um, how we use this, how it works, and sort of what we're doing in here. So first step, if someone wants to create an idea, let's say I'm an engineer or a designer or even a PM and I want to create an idea, um, I would just come here and I hit the create button. So there's a template which is already pre-populated in here, thanks to the lovely JPD team. So this is quite a cool feature of JPD that you can add a template for the description for the issues. So I'm just going to call this Edmund's new idea. idea. Um, what problem is and so we've created this template it's something that we want everyone to fill out So if you're an engineer or designer and you have an idea We want you to have to answer a few key questions before you can actually submit something And so that is what's the problem we're solving who are we solving it for and what will be the impact if we solve this problem and then any related links So I'm gonna skip this for now because obviously I'm not creating a real idea But we would expect all of these to be filled out by anyone who is submitting an idea and if they're not filled out Then this is when we would use that um, needs more information workflow that kind of loops up over the top that you see here so down here, you can see as well, there's this group category. So the Bitbucket Cloud teams are split into three core groups. We have developer experience, enterprise experience, and DevOps automation. So you would pick the group that is most logical for this particular idea. If you don't know, that's fine. You don't have to pick it up. Uh, and another cool feature of JPD is we can provide uh, tooltips for all of the fields in our JPD instance. And so um, we've designed these tooltips to explain to people what they need to do for each of these fields, which is really handy. Similarly, if the person who's submitting the idea has like a rough idea of the effort required in order to implement it, they can put that here. And again, we've explained um, what each score on, what each level on the score is here. Uh, we try to keep this, we try to find a good balance between making this uh, objective and measurable, but also not asking people to commit to things they can't realistically predict. So rather than saying how many weeks or how many sprints do you think this will be, what we ask people is, what is the unit of measurement they would use in order to measure the time taken? So if something's tiny, they're probably going to measure it in weeks. If something's huge, they might measure it in years. And that's how they score the effort column here. We have three main um, strategic priorities that we're focusing on in Bitbucket Cloud at the moment. And so the last three fields we ask people to fill in is basically how this idea would contribute to one of the, or any of these three priorities. So they are enterprise migration blockers, which is our number one priority in Bitbucket Cloud. Uh, dev productivity impact, which is another major priority for Bitbucket Cloud. And then finally, cost savings. So if this idea has the opportunity to save large amounts of costs, it should also be scored here. And again, what we've done is we've given a guide on what the impact needs to be to get each of the different score levels. And these have been carefully calibrated so that a five in one is roughly equivalent in value to a five in another. That was actually a really interesting process because when we were doing this, we found that cost savings was 
quite hard to ever hit like a five one, particularly for an organization the size of Bitbucket. For us to get a five in dev, pro, sorry, in the enterprise migration, for example, we'd be saying that this would block most enterprise migrations. For a cost saving initiative to have an impact of roughly the same kind of significance, we'd be saying that that needs to be saving in the area of over $10 million every single year. Uh, and very few items that Bitbucket Cloud does is gonna hit that level. So it was a really interesting exercise doing this because it let us see relatively <clears throat> how big of an effort we'd have to do in each of these three different areas in order to have a, uh, an equivalent impact. So I'm gonna keep going with this demonstration. So I'm gonna say the effort is a two, the enterprise migration block is a three, and these ones maybe are a one each, and I'm gonna hit create. So this is now gonna get loaded into the JPD site. And I'm on this all items view here, which does what it says. It shows you every single item in the entire board. So if I go to Edmund here, I can see Edmund's new idea um, is in here. I can see all the information about it. Um, so from here, I'm, I'm now the engineer creating an idea and proposing it to the team. My job is effectively done for now. What will happen now is it goes into this automated process that I showed you before. And the idea is that this idea should now be reviewed by the PM team to decide what we want to do with it. Now, there is one last thing I can do as the person submitting the idea, which is if this is a particularly important thing to do, like right now, there's a sort of level of time criticality about it. I could come in here and I could tick this triage escalation uh, flag. If I tick the triage escalation flag, that's basically me saying that I need this to be reviewed ASAP. So I need this to be reviewed at the next PM um, triage session. The reason this is important is we have a quite a long backlog of ideas that we haven't even had a chance to triage yet. And so it would take us potentially months to get through them all. So what we wanna make sure is that if someone has an idea which is really important, they can escalate that straight to the top of the list and it will get looked at straight away. We trust that people are gonna use this responsibly and they're not just gonna escalate every single item. Um, and so far that's been working really well. So now I'm gonna change roles. I'm gonna sort of step out of that you know, engineer or designer or external stakeholder sort of uh, headspace. And I'm gonna go back into my normal role, which is as a, as a product manager. Um, so the next step in this process is the triaging process. So we have a, a meeting every fortnight with all the PMs where we basically sit down on Zoom and we go through some of the items uh, that have been submitted and we triage them. So what we do is we start at this um, tr to triage view. So this is basically a list of all of the items in our JPD site that are in a particular status. So the status is proposed. Um, we have a workflow that we've built out in JPD that is designed to support us in this process. So if I go into project settings and then workflow, um, you can see the workflow we have here. So we have this idea of proposed is where it lands initially. We have this needs more information status, which we use to gather more information about a particular idea. We have a series of sort of reviewing later statuses, and then we have backlog, and then we have our actual uh, sort of um, Atlassian way standard uh, engineering process when we build something. And you can see this kind of replicates what we have here, although it doesn't look exactly the same for obvious reasons. So going back to the actual item itself, so going into the triage view, uh, if I now search for Edmund here, you can see Edmund's new idea, and it has a triage escalation uh, flag ticked. So I could remove this filter, and that will show up pretty close to the top because I've got that flag ticked. So on this view, we've set it up so that the triage escalation field is used as the primary sort field on this view. So anything with this ticked will always float up to the top. We've also got a uh, field here to say that this ticket has been generated from a bcloud item. So bcloud is um, basically our public Jira instance that we use to track customer requests and requirements. We've set up an automation so that if uh, an a idea is created from bcloud, so we know it's coming from a highly requested um, ticket from customers, it automatically gets this uh, triage escalation flag ticked as well. Because anything that customers are, are asking for, like in, in loud volume, we should probably be at least reviewing um, ASAP. So there's a lot in here at the moment because our support team has just started using JPD to filter uh, ideas in from um, support channels and from uh, bcloud. So that's why there's quite a lot of them here. Normally this escalated uh, column would maybe have four or five items in it. It's just because our support team has recently pushed a lot of ideas in from bcloud that we have quite a lot of these escalated items. So going into my idea, um, I have double the template here. Sorry, that's a lovely little, uh, Automation for Jira bug, which I'll fix later. Um, the next step in the process basically is to decide whether or not this ticket has enough information for us to actually make a determination as to whether we should accept this into our backlog or not. Now, 
this one obviously doesn't have that much information. So we would probably uh, say this needs more info. We can't actually assess this right now. So the way we handle this is through the JIRA workload. So we have this status here and we set this status to needs more information. And basically what that does is it flags to the person that created this ticket that they need to update the content and put more information on. So normally what we would also do is we'd leave a comment and you can see this is made by me. I'm going to go at admin. Please add some more details. And we just leave that. And that way the person who created it knows what they need to do. We'd probably leave a more detailed message and add more details, but you get the idea. So once the uh, creator has added some more information in, I'm just gonna say some stuff in here. Um, what we would, what we tell them to do is update the content on here and then set this back to proposed. And that brings it back into this triage view. And if it's important, they may also um, make sure that they leave that triage escalation flag ticked as well so that it comes straight to the top of the list. Once that's done, and we assume they have all the information in here, what we then do is we decide whether or not this is something we want to look, look at right now. Now, Bitbucket Cloud is fairly resource constrained. We have about 105 people in total. Um, so we, we can't work on everything that gets proposed. I mean, no team can, but we, we have to probably turn down nine out of 10 things that come through our door because we just don't have the resources to do it. So we've had to build a fairly comprehensive uh, system for managing things that we're not going to do because we don't just want to dismiss everything and say no. We want to make sure that people feel like their ideas are actually being listened to. And just because your idea isn't being done straight away doesn't mean it wasn't a great idea. It doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. It just means we don't have the resources to do it right now. So assuming that someone has submitted an idea and that it has enough information, there are one of uh, five potential paths, but realistically it's one of three. And then one of those three has a bunch of different options. So from here, again, we use the status um, field to decide what we're going to do next. Now, if this is an idea, which is a good idea, but we're just honestly probably never going to do it, um, we would just set it to not right now. And that basically removes it from all of views. It doesn't delete it or anything. It's still there. The person who created it can actually go and um, set it back to uh, proposed at some later date if something uh, meaningful changes about that idea. That means it should be re-reviewed. But effectively, a not right now is it being removed from the board and us saying, we're not going to look at this. It is not part of our strategic priority. Um, there's not enough value or maybe it doesn't align with what we're trying to achieve. So that would be basically a, it's a no to be blunt. It's, it's when we're not going to do something. Then we have these three options here. So we have review next quarter, review next year and review in six months. And these are really powerful. And these are things we've actually added um, as we've sort of iterated on this process as we've gone forward. So what we were finding is that there were a lot of things coming in that were really important and we knew that we would need to do at some point in the near future, but it wasn't something that we were going to focus on right now. Rather than just accept them into the backlog and have them just sit there and kind of build out this, this huge backlog, which I'm sure everyone's very familiar with, the never ending backlog that just doesn't ever get smaller. We wanted to go a different way. And so we've created these processes where we say, we're not going to do this right now, but we want to be reminded of this in three, six or 12 months. And maybe at that point, we'll want to do something more about it then. So you can set this to say review next quarter. And what this does behind the scenes is it uses some automation and some very simple scripts to calculate what the date will be in you know, three months time. And it sort of hides that on a field, a JPD field somewhere down the bottom that you can't see. Nice thing about JPD is it's really easy to create as many fields as you want. And so we have a field on the ticket called bubble update, which is basically the date we want this ticket to bubble back up in our process. Um, we then have another automation, which basically every night loops over every single ticket in our JPD instance, and basically just checks if it has that bubble update. And if it does, it checks if the bubble update is today. And if it is, then it basically what it does is it sets this idea back to um, proposed and it escalates it so that it comes straight back to the top of our process. Now that may sound a bit complicated, so I'll, I'll go over that again and I'll sort of visualize that for you. So if we set something to, we want to review it later, let's say six months, we have a little automation, which every night checks every item in JPD and basically says, has it been six months since they pressed that button? And the way they know that is there's a field in JPD which tells you when it will be six months since we pressed that button. If it is six months or 12 months or three months, whichever one we specified, since we press that button, 
the automation sets the status back to proposed and it escalates it so it lands back in the IDS inbox ready for us to, uh, to review at the next time round uh, we do the process. This has been an extremely useful feature for us to set up and workflow for us to set up because it solved that problem of the, the never ending backlog, the backlog that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger of great ideas that we probably should do at some point, but we just can't quite do now. This has helped us address that in a really, really effective way. And it's one of the best things that we've gotten out of the JPD process in terms of triaging ideas as they come in. The other option, as I said before, is we just search not right now and it kind of disappears. It, it just is, it removes from the board, uh, not deleted, but it is no longer shown in any of the views. And then the last option in here is if we actually are going to look at something straight away. And this is very rare. Normally we do not go down this path. It's maybe one out of every 10. So what will happen if we uh, are going to look at it straight away is we, I'm sorry, I'm just going to set it back to repose, set the workflow. We would accept it into the backlog. And once it's accepted into the backlog, it passes into the next stage of workflows that we've set up in JPD that I'm not going to be going over today. That will be in a subsequent video that I'll do a little bit later. Once it's been assigned to the backlog, there's a few things that we do. So the first thing is we remove the triage escalation because it's, it's been approved to the backlog. It doesn't need to be escalated in triage anymore. We then assign it to a PM. So we have a few PMs in Bitbucket Cloud. Uh, and as soon as something is assigned to the backlog, we say it needs to have a PM assigned to it because then they become the owner of that item in the backlog. Now, the important thing is that when something is in the backlog, it does not mean it's going to get worked on straight away. So a backlog is not wonder or explore. A backlog, the backlog basically is where it's a staging ground where we put things that we are going to look at soon, but we're not looking at straight away. So it's kind of a holding space. Um, once it has got a PM assigned and it's gone to the backlog and removed the triage escalation field, we're basically done with this uh, triaging process and it's ready to go into the next stage of the process, which is prioritization. Now we have a whole other set of views in here for prioritization that I'm not going to be going over now. I'll be going over those in a subsequent video uh, and I'll explain to you how we do our prioritization and then how that flows down into our um, capacity planning, both for PMs, design, and also and some teams are using uh, JPD to help capacity plan for engineering as well. All right, thanks everyone for watching. So just a quick recap what we've covered here today. We've shown how engineers, designers, anyone can uh, suggest ideas and go into our ideas inbox. We've shown you how we have a fortnightly PM triage process that helps us decide whether an idea is ready to be actually reviewed or not. And if it's not, how we feed that back to the creator so we can review it again next time. Uh, I've shown you how we handle situations where something is important, but it's not what we're going to be looking at right now. So we may want to review it later on and we use our automation to bubble that back up in three, six or 12 months time. Or we may just say we're not going to do it straight away and we said it's not right now. And finally, I've shown you what we do when we are going to do something straight away. So we assign a PM to it, we remove the escalation flag if it's got one, and then we accept it into the backlog ready to be prioritized. Um, feel free to ask questions about this process, either in Loom or in Confluence, where I post this. Uh, I'm more than happy to you know, share more information about how we've been working on setting this up. Um, also, if anyone has any ideas for ways we can improve this, I'm always open to hear that, so I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, hope you got some value out of this, and see you in the next one.